right? Okay. Uh, I was just thinking about what Prabhaka was asking, uh, Prabhaka, what you were asking about times and seasons. Um, I was just thinking um, that intentionally you can also, you know, uh, like develop the prophetic, right? Uh, the prophetic, uh, or lean more into the prophetic, like um, develop the gifts of the spirit, um, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy. Um, so, um, developing meaning, you know, exercising these gifts, you know, discover and also uh, learn, continue to learn and uh, lean in, you know, even more uh, every day, you know, practice and uh, I mean, learn from the success and the mistakes and continue to learn. So, that, uh, that is also one, you know, I, I just felt that that was one of the keys that um, to understand the times and the seasons, you know. Um, Okay, so uh, let's continue. Now, uh, what we're going to look at uh, is, um, uh, you know, the the other guideline is, is, is to be realistic and practical, okay? Um, so, uh, just wanted to say that it's, it's not, though it seems uh, contradictory, you know, um, it is not, right? Uh, because if we need to, you know, if, if we are dreaming big, it need not always be contradictory to being practical and being realistic, okay? It can be big, it can be practical, it can be realistic, right? The plans that we are making. So, um, the, uh, the, but the wisdom in being realistic and practical is the, is the implementation of it or even the initiation of it, the start of it, right? So, something big uh, can start small, right? And for that, you need to be realistic and practical. Right, something huge, a uh, uh, big plan, but it it can start with a small step, and uh, to be mindful of that, and to be faithful in that, and to be practical about that um, is you know is is again wisdom. So so let's look at um, uh, let's look at um, what are some of those practical things that we can consider. What are some some of those realistic realistic things that we can consider when we are making you know uh, when you're making plans. Right. Um, just a minute. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, uh, but as wise, redeeming the time uh, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay. So, you know, along with the zeal, along with the passion and the big plans, uh, it calls for wisdom. Right? So the exhortation here is not to be unwise, but to be wise and to understand uh, what the will of the Lord is right? and walk circumspectly. Right? Uh, walk circumspectly, meaning you, you reflect, think about your actions, think about your the steps that you're taking, right, and uh, uh, and use wisdom, right. So, um, wisdom, which uh, which manifests itself in being practical and realistic, is is not contrary to being spiritual or contrary to, or um, you know, does not contradict thinking big, right. So, um, here are some things that we can look at, uh, some practical steps, right. Start with what you have, right. Start with what you have. Maybe uh, uh, we're thinking about uh, some things that maybe some maybe a new initiative, maybe a uh, maybe a new uh, you know a new direction, uh, maybe a new strategy, uh, or you know something fresh that is starting and you're just sitting down when planning things and maybe even setting up goals. Now start with what you have. Right. What is it that you have right now? What is the resource that you have right now? What is the, uh, the what are the assets that you have right now? Start with what you have. Right. The second thing is do not take on more than what you can handle. In the sense, you know, in this season, in this, um, uh, in this, uh, you know, uh, time frame, uh, with the current responsibilities and uh, loads that you are carrying, what is it that you can handle? You know? Now, now this will. Uh, continue to change, right? You will gain strength, right? We will 
uh, get better at doing things, um, uh, better better and better at doing things as we, uh, you know, increase in uh, knowledge and understanding and skill. You know, we will be able to do uh, things quicker uh, in in a uh, or maybe in a shorter time. We will we will get better at it as we keep at it. Right. So, but right now, you know, what is it that you can take that you can handle? Okay, uh, that's that's important because it does not, it should not crush, it should not, it should not, you know, uh, it should not cripple, right? Where you come to a place of not being able to move at all, move forward at all, right? So what is it that you can take, with the with the understanding that yes, you know, I will be take able to take on more, I will be able to do more as my strength increases, as I intentionally you know uh, work on this and as my skill gets better. Right, so what is it that you can handle, right? Which is very important. Uh, knowing what you can handle, we can always stretch. We can always uh, stretch to some extent, but not to the extent that we, you know, we, we are we are breaking, right? So what is it that you can take, right? Third thing, uh, and these are simple things. So just I'm just going through it. Gather information about the task at, at hand. You know what does it involve? Uh, what information can you can you get about what what you uh, about that particular process, about that particular project, uh, about that particular you know you, about that initiative? What is it? What does it involve? Um, start gathering the information, right? Maybe if it's something to do with building uh, something, right? Uh, so just find out. Okay, where? gather information what does it involve um, if i if i need to build this what does it involve what is the cost involved what are the steps involved what are the process involved just start gathering information right proverbs 16 13 16 says every prudent man acts with knowledge okay but um, someone who's opposite of that opposite of prudent like lays open his folly right so um, so uh, it's good to get information gather information Right, and we know uh, that we will not, we will not know everything about it, right? But to the extent that we know, and the extent that we have information, plan, right? Plan with what you know, plan with what you have, but um, yeah, do get information about it, right? Um, the second thing is about, I mean, the uh, the other thing is about the, the fifth thing is about the pace at which we do it, right? Um, the pace at which we do things, you know. Do it. Um, uh, make sure that there are, there's nothing that is skipped. Make sure that you don't, uh, you know, hurry up or there is no. Um, take it. Uh, we don't need to be in a hurry. Okay. Yes, some things are time bound. Uh, be mindful of that, but uh, we don't have to hurry to the extent of compromising on maybe the quality of work compromising on uh, the the completion of certain things right so uh, don't be in a hurry to to just get or to just check the boxes to get the task done um, and it it turns out mediocre right so uh, take things one step at a time and so we are talking about planning of course right um, know your priorities okay that's um, that's a very important thing, you know, for any task, you know, does it come first or does it come last, right? Uh, and we need to be sure of that. Uh, is it is it important or is it urgent, right? Is if it's important and urgent, you know that, uh, you know the the grid. Uh, maybe we can look at it a little later also. Um, you know, is it important? Is it urgent? Uh, if it's both, then you then you need to do it, and we need to get into it. But if it is um, it is not, right, then then we don't have to get into it, right? It is not urgent. It is not important. Maybe it doesn't even need to feature in our uh, to do list, or it can be something which can be, if possible, be delegated so we can, uh, you yourself can, uh, you know, target those things which are important, which are you know which are urgent, which which only you can do. Right, so know your priorities. Um, write down, document your plan, communicate your plan, share it. You know, especially if people are connected, 
know, if it's not just a personal plan, but if people are connected uh, to that process, right? If there is a team involved, if there's an organization involved, if there are multiple teams involved, you know, and and when we say team, it could be just two other people, or it could be one other person also, you know, who's um, who who's there as a partner right, to help. So communicate the plan. Let it not be just in our minds, but uh, you know, if we put it down, it it, it helps us. Uh, it it helps aids our thinking. It becomes clear, right? I, I'm sure you've uh, realized that, right? When you when you write down something, it's difficult to you know. I, I I don't know if you realize that when you you know put down the vision for your life, right? What is that? What is that vision? What is God calling me to do? Or you know, putting putting it down in concise statements, it it's a difficult thing, right? Uh, it takes effort. It takes time. It's it's a difficult thing. Sometimes we need to kind of struggle over it, labor with it. But when we put it down, then it becomes clear. Right? It becomes clear. Uh, we don't forget. It becomes clear what I need to do. So writing down, documenting it always helps. And writing down and documenting it enables us to share with others as well. Right? Uh, uh, we just need to you know, share that document or uh, share that mail or share that with others. Right? Um, many times, um, you know, we, we tend to do things, we tend to keep things uh, very close to our heart and uh, maybe we want it to be protected. Um, we don't want to, you know, anyone to speak anything negative about it. We don't want, you know, we want to speak life over it, but not, you know, we don't want to speak, uh, you know, we don't want anyone to tear it down. So it's so insulated, protected, that uh, we don't receive counsel about it, right? Uh, so it's a good thing to have people um, to receive godly counsel, to have people speak uh, from their wisdom, from their experience, to receive that counsel. And to have people speak into our lives. You know, uh, Proverbs 11, 14 says, where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So it helps, right? Um, uh, but at the same time, to be discerning, right? Um, because is it counsel? Is it wise counsel? Uh, and is it come coming with the right motive? And the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit will help you to discern. And uh, but the thing is to receive godly counsel. Right? Proverbs twenty eighteen plans are established by counsel. So your plan, plan that you're making, the plan that we are involved in putting together, um, it's established by counsel. Right? It made it is made firm. It is made strong by wise counsel, right? uh, advice, wisdom. It it is it is made sure. So. We can listen, we can receive, and by wise counsel, wage war. If it means to do something, it's a task that, that needs you to win, to accomplish, let there be wise counsel. So in our planning, you know, we have the counselor with us, and the counselor also brings counsel to us through multiple sources. You know, sometimes the sources are well, it's it's not what you expected, but it comes from very unexpected quarters right? or from unexpected sources. But it's it's wisdom, it's wise counsel. Be open, be discerning, right? To receive that, so receive godly counsel. Um, and uh, last couple of things: be open to change, revise your plan, be flexible. In other words, right? Be be flexible uh, about the plan. Uh, in areas where you know it needs change, especially when there is change, when there is a refining, uh, you know, be uh, flexible. Like right? Proverbs 16 and verse 3, I think we looked at that verse a, a couple of sessions back. You know, commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Okay, so when we commit the task, when we commit the initiative to God, uh, He makes sure that our thoughts are est established. Right, uh, so he he goes down to the thought level and uh, 
of course we need to allow him to do that but when we commit when we yield our thoughts will be established by him and which is which is a which is a good thing right which is something that we need something that we require require thoughts will be established and the verse 9 says a man's heart plans his way but the lord directs his steps so sometimes we we put together something and the and the lord directs us uh, there is a refining which uh, the lord brings in there is a uh, there is a you know there is a, an, an establishing or something that the lord brings in which makes it even better right which makes it even better which makes it even fruitful so if we are close to him leading in that way then uh, then we are actually missing out right we are missing out and uh, and i know temperamentally uh, you know some of us could be very very close to change changes um, you know especially when we have ma- made some plans and to reconsider uh, you know some things reconsider certain steps um, uh, temperamentally you know maybe we are not open to it i'd be saying okay this is it it's close let's let's go for it uh, but you know when you know that uh, uh, you know there is this uh, there is this directing that's coming from god there is this wisdom that's coming from him uh, and you know we will do well to to receive that we will do well to follow through with that okay um so yeah so um so maybe sometimes there are you know delays maybe there are sometimes there are you know an unexpected direction the lord leads us in um uh, of course first thing is to ensure make sure that uh, that it is god indeed who's leading uh, but it takes us into uh, the increase it takes us into you know even more fruitfulness right okay say uh spirit led change is needed to transcend into new seasons of glory with god amen yeah so um so the, the lord has uh, the lord just takes us you know he does take us to another level right so be open to that okay um another thing about planning uh, probably yeah there's the last thing about planning is uh, to understand that you know, just like how we looked at vision and how we you know we we get excited about vision you know sometimes uh, you know we get we look at this plan wow this is wonderful you know uh, and i remember um you know in my school days i'll i'll make a study plan right i'll start from six months before make a study plan look at it and say okay all these subjects you know i'm, I'm just giving it ample time to study to revise um and it, it looks fantastic on paper it's like six months before you know i'm like thinking i'm i'm gonna nail it this time right so six months becomes five months and the plan has not started yet four months three months two months and then you know one a month before the exam and still you know i'm just living the life on the edge not starting anything and then you know and sometimes it 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 would it would come down to the night before the exams you know it started out with six months the plan and it's come down to you know um just cramming the night before the exam i don't know if any of you have that experience but i had it multiple times right? and i'm like wondering what what happened what happened to those six months right well what happened was that the plan didn't uh, you know get off the ground in the sense there was no execution of the plan right so um, many times we plan things but that plan needs to be executed and you know, we might have a great vision but that vision ultimately spells or translates into work right so it needs to be done it needs to be executed and uh, you know i used to work for a company which made toys right uh, mattel toys uh, barbie and you know hot wheels and, you know so so every weekend you know Uh, we used to have these promotions in 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 these malls right uh, and those days malls were just coming up in bangalore and i think we had maybe two or three now there are many many more so uh, we you used to plan uh, these promotions and uh, and it it used to look at 
you know, great plan. But then what we realized was that it had to be carried out on the shop floor. It had to be executed the way we planned, you know, in the office. So what was planned in the office and what was actually executed on the shop floor, you know, if there's a mismatch, then it it really didn't yield the result. And weekends, you know, we were looking at weekends uh, where the sale would happen and there will be more, you know, footfall in the in, in the in the stores and so on. Right. So you know it was an important lesson. It's it's great you can plan, but you know, it has to be executed. And execution always takes you know, there's a, there's a lot of hard work, effort, sweat, and uh, and only then will it yield, right? So here we see uh, the planning is the beginning, but uh, be diligent to work out the plan, like carry out the plan. Initially, there will be some, you know, there might be some inertia, you know, uh, maybe personally, we might feel uh, some kind of inertia in getting it done and stepping into it, and but start, right? Um, Second thing to keep in mind is um, don't let the present circumstances keep you from doing what you should be doing. You know, in the present circumstances, they will always, you know, uh, now this is something that uh, I'm not saying that I'm 100% successful and maybe all of us, maybe there could be, you know, some some folks here who are quite successful at that, you know, managing different things, but uh, but this is a reality. Right. So when we plan things, you know, we're planning, okay, this is what I want to do. But then there are these things that are presence responsibilities or current things um, that need to be done, which seem to crowd our schedule. Right. So all circumstances, maybe some challenges, maybe some difficulties, right? Um, well, don't let that keep you down. Don't let that prevent you from doing what you should be doing. Right. So we're talking about execution of the plan. So when it comes to the execution of the plan, there will be, you know, there will be some rescheduling that needs to be done with our maybe with our life, with our, you know, uh, maybe there are certain things, you know, you can't carry everything, right? There are certain things that you might have to, you know, hand over for a season. So, or, you know, put down for a season and you need, you're the be best judge of that, right? You decide, okay, this is what I, I'm going to put down now so that I can carry this. This is priority. I need to do this, right? So, um, so, that, so that's the second thing, uh, you know, there will be things when it, which will come in the way of implementation of the plan because you're already set into a you know routine you're already set into a schedule uh, there will be things that need rearranging there will be things that maybe need to be you know dropped off so that you can do this right but um, since it's important since it's you know you've you've you know uh, you've journeyed with god through this you know take it up do it right and uh, thirdly it's not enough to be busy, you know, to ask the question, are we busy doing the right things? Okay. Um, well, if you, if you want to go from point A to point B, um, and if you want to run from point A to point B, you know, probably the best thing to do is not to get on a treadmill, right? Because on a treadmill, you know, you will be at point A and you will be running, but you will not be reaching point B. Right, and it, I mean it's a it's a good activity. There's a lot of sweating that's happening, calories being burnt, but your objective was to go from point A to point B, and right? not remain at point B. So um, to ask oneself, you know, uh, I, I'm busy, but am I busy doing the right things? Is it am I busy doing what needs to be done so that I'm moving forward uh, with the plan? Right. And moving forward in executing the plan, or um, am I filling my time with activities? And um, I'm doing this. I'm attending this meeting. I'm attending this workshop. I'm attending this seminar. Uh, I'm doing all this, uh, but you know, am I moving in executing the plan? Right. So we need I, I, again. We need to ask ourselves and uh, even in asking this question just involve god and, and ask ask the lord, lord um, 
Lord, should I be doing this, Lord, at this time? Is it really necessary? Right. Okay, uh, let's look at a few scriptures here. Uh, you know, Proverbs 12 and verse 11. He who tills his hand, land will be satisfied with bread. But he who fo follows frivolity is devoid of understanding. You know, many times we justify um, certain activities which are time stealers. You know, there are certain activities which, um, uh, you know, which just uh, take away portions of time, chunks of time. You know, maybe social media and spending time on Instagram or, you know, YouTube, which is, you know, uh, well, uh, we know the, the value in doing that. We know that, uh, you know, there are certain things that you need to do. Uh, maybe it's promotions. Maybe it's, uh, you know, learning that's happening. Maybe it's yeah, just leisure. Okay. But be mindful of that because huge chunks of time, uh, which is a non-renewable resource, will just go by. Right. So be mindful of that. Um, uh, Proverbs 39 was for the for the soul of a lazy man desires but has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Right. So diligence talks about determination. Diligence talks about um, you know, actual work. Um, so uh, diligent, being um, being active, putting effort. There is uh, you know um, there is benefit at the end of that. Right. So. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll stop here uh, with regard to plan. So I I, ho I hope that changes um, you know something about us in us with this whole aspect of planning. That uh, especially when it comes to church or ministry, um, you know sometimes I mean we 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 might go the you know either extreme right. We might either plan in the flesh, leave out. Uh, you know, this aspect of being led by God or, you know, not sit down and plan at all and not use our, you know, our, our learnings and, and mental faculty uh, at all and and say, um, well, that, that seems to be so, uh, so off the flesh. I, I'm going to lean in and be led by the spirit. But then, you know, this is what we see in scripture, that God is a God who plans that God is a God of plan and purpose and he unfolds everything by the counsel of his you know the plans of the Lord uh, by the counsel of his will right so we see that and and we looked at some of these guidelines now yeah we may not remember everything but we can always go back and check and and see you know what are some things that I can you know put to practice right so um, just want to encourage us to you know put this into practice right as we as we plan. Okay, uh, the next topic is about organizing. Um, and again, here we will look at some of the practical aspects of organizing, arranging, uh, which, um, you know, which needs to be, uh, which, which will be an activity or which will be something or, or a responsibility of the leader, right? Uh, while we are studying Christian leadership, uh, we are looking at uh, maybe a leader in a position of leadership, a person who's in a position of leadership, leading a team or a ministry or a church um, or, or anything, or, or we can actually apply it even in our, you know, our roles and responsibilities in, you know, as a working professional as well. Uh, but we see that, you know, that we need to organize our, our you know, several areas of our lives, right? several areas of our work in order to be optimum, in order to be effective. Right? So um, so let's look at that. Uh, maybe for about 10 minutes, I just want to you know, focus on that. Okay, so we're just moving from planning into organizing. And, um, and, uh, and we're going to look at some tools also uh, uh, to help us organize, <clears throat> organize our personal time. Um, and personal activity. Okay, so let, let's uh, look into that. Okay, so to organize is to uh, arrange something in a systematic and orderly manner. To just arrange something, sort something, categorize it, and to put things together. Okay, so um, I think the best place to start is our wardrobe. You know, that's that's that will show us, you know, how open we are to being organized or uh, how uh, uh, organizing you know, things is, is part of our lives. Um, you know, uh, I think that's, that's a great place to look into and see, am I organized or not? So organize is to arrange, 
right? In a systematic and orderly manner. So I just want to ask, you know, how many of you, um, you know, find the things that you want to, that you're searching for all the time? You know, it could be your, you know, house keys, it could be the keys to your vehicle, it could be, uh, you know, your personal stuff. How many of you saying that I, the time, you know, or I spend about, you know, five minutes looking into it. And every time, you know, uh, if I have to search for my phone and it's like you know, looking into the bag, you know, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So how many of you find it all the time? How many of you have challenges with it? Okay, let's look at finding it. Okay, so, okay, if Mangi finding it all the time, Sam finding it all the time. Uh, okay, who else finds it all the time? Uh, sometimes, okay, you you end up finding it, okay finding it not all the time but sometimes yeah okay 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 so which means that you know where it is and you uh you know after using it kennedy says sometimes you know after using stuff you put it back you know where, where it belongs uh you know so in a in a way you you are organized in that sense right you you put it where you put things back where they belong or you've um, you know you've uh, you have this within you to uh, you know to to put it you know this is where it is there's a place there's a set place for uh, for the things right that you're using that you so you don't look for it elsewhere you know this is a place where it is right so uh, you know that's the basic thing Right, arranging, organizing, uh, maybe even sequencing, putting things together so you can, it is effective, you know. So when you arrange your wardrobe, it life's easier, right? You know where the clothes are, you know where the trousers are, you know where the shirts are, you know, uh, you know where the other clothing is, and um, and then you you find it, you take it, right? You're not uh, wasting time, you know, uh, on your desktop, you know, if you're, if you're using a computer, uh, on your desktop, some desktops are like nightmares, you know, it's like, you're like, oh, it, it's like everything is there scattered across the screen, you know, where do you find it? You know, how do you, how do you find it? And then how do you find a single file, a document? You're going to be sending a, spending a lot of time just to find one file, to retrieve one file. Then it's a big challenge, right? So, um, so the thing is, organizing, you know, it always helps. It makes it, uh, you know, so much easier, effective, smooth. Where your time is spent in on the important things, maybe solving a problem, maybe finding, you know, solutions for certain challenges, rather than these routine tasks of accessing it, uh, retrieving. You know files and documents right so, so just some simple examples uh, of how organizing can really help us now now when you take it to the big things you know maybe organizing a ministry uh, organizing you know certain things in our own lives then, then you see the importance of it okay so these small things actually you know if, if we if you don't actually deal with the small things it it might you know affect these areas also so it's good to start there right i'm not saying that people who are super organized will will not you know uh, will be organized in, i'm not making that connection or i'm not even saying that people who are they're not organized personally will never you know be organized uh, organizationally and all that I'm not making that thing but then it really helps like if it's part of your life it really uh, helps right okay um let me just share that screen again um Right. So, uh, what are you know when it comes to uh, uh, you know as a Christian leader, what are some areas to get organized? You know, especially if you're leading a church, a ministry. Okay. So, um, one is to organize your church, organize your ministry, and uh, it to so that it will function better. And uh, based on the and uh, uh, there are many ways to do it, but then uh, 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 it, it can be done on the basis of the people that the ministry is reaching. Okay, so um, you know if it's a you know this is a simple chart which shows that okay you can 
look at what are the ministries within the church you know we're looking at for example a church you can you know kind of extend it to whatever else that you're handling uh, whatever you're organizing so what are the ministries within the church right uh, who are the people we are reaching uh, within the church what are the ministries within the church you know to organize it uh, according to that um, then or to categorize it to identify it uh, what are the ministries which are you know outside which are reaching outside so it's an outreach it's an evangelism uh, uh, based right what is it that that we do in order to reach the people outside you know with the gospel so inside could be teaching training counseling um and it could be you know um uh, yeah maybe a deeper study maybe discipleship you know what what comes as di di under discipleship um and all that so reaching out would be uh, outreaches you know maybe personal evangelism maybe missions uh, and so on you know uh, of course the uh, mission is another category where reaching beyond the you know immediate sphere right so to organize our departments organ organize our organization according to this where where each of these ministries have somebody overseeing them or maybe someone overseeing multiple you know um, ministries but um you you have you know you can organize yourself that way now organize the um, you know the the ministry in that manner okay um the second thing would, would be to organize the people okay now when we look at um, a church when we look at a ministry we see that um, people are uh, a very very uh, are, are are the valuable most valuable resource right we have and um, and we need to organize people as well people are doing various uh, you know various tasks they are carrying out various responsibilities they are shouldering various responsibilities so um, it's 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 important that we you know categorize or you know organize so there is um, you know so you identify okay this is the person who's carrying out this function or this is the person who's you know uh, who can take care of this responsibility you know if there is a big responsibility now you organize people to shoulder those responsibilities so uh, in order to do that now i i realize that you know some of this is uh, very very basic and uh, some of us are very, very familiar with with, with it uh, but i'm just repeating it right so um, well the first thing would be okay who are the people who are actually going to be leading what we call as a, a ministry right something that serves the people you know a set of things a set of processes um, that we do in order to serve the people right maybe if it's something like counseling which is something that's reaching out inside the church and also outside the church. Now, who is going to be leading it, right? Who's going to be overseeing it, right? So um, the first thing would be to, you know, have, uh, have uh, or appoint or, um, you know, uh, uh, select people to, in order, in order to lead. Uh, such ministries, you know, find finding someone capable, someone with a with a vision, uh, with the same uh, with the same heart, right? Someone who has a heart to serve in, in that area, who's gifted, graced uh, in that area, right? Then, within that ministry, show sure that there will be, you know, other functions which are required. You know, if you take a church, then you then you see, you know, for the Sunday service, there are, you know, several several moving parts right there are several uh, processes that are going simultaneously in order to uh, you know uh, for the service to be um, uh, for the service from start to finish right and some of these pro processes would start at uh, you know uh, not on sunday but then it's the beginning of the week itself right or, or the middle of the week so um, who are those people who take care of those processes like maybe ushering maybe media, maybe worship, uh, maybe it's uh, the welcome team, 
um, maybe uh, you know all these areas like live streaming uh, audio sound and all that so are there people who are overseeing these functions right uh, now initially the function could be very very basic maybe it's a church with 10 people you know maybe there is um, and and Maybe there's sound system and someone needs to handle it. And maybe there's one person, you know, this is enough, just comes, switches on, they do it. But then it's good to identify who's that one person who's going to do it, right? And uh, and so there is accountability. So you, we know who's that, you know, so that it gets done as well, right? So nothing falls through the gaps, right? Nothing uh, is left undone, right? Who's doing that today? Uh, I don't know. You know, it shouldn't come to that, so that um, you know it's effective, it's it's run well, it's done well, right? So team leaders for functions, and uh, you know within the team, uh, of course the team is made could be made of volunteers, could be made of staff. The team leaders also a mix of staff and you know uh, could be um, uh, volunteers who are volunteering their time, volunteering their you know uh, their gifts and everything. They are they are coming forward to do this, right? So. So uh, it's uh, it's important that we that we look at it, look at the, the these functions, and see who, um, who are the people who are actually doing it, and to to either invite if they are volunteers to invite, ask them to do it, get people trained and ask them to do it, or to you know to appoint people who already have the training and the ability. Uh, for that particular, you know, maybe it's a specialized function, right, which requires that. Maybe it's a specialized function like maybe handling sound, right, and uh, maybe it, it requires someone who who has the expertise, who has the skill and uh, and the experience. So, um, and well, we, we might have to maybe appoint someone for that particular uh, as staff to carry out that particular responsibility. So, you know, it, it needs to be done that way. Okay, so organizing people, organizing ministries, um, and also organizing our time. And this is, uh, you know, another key thing, right? Um, the time that we have, the time that you and I have is, it needs to be spent well, it needs to be stewarded well. And, uh, and the 24 hours that we have is, uh, is what we have to get things done. Right to um, to carry things, uh, get things done effectively. So uh, it it helps if we plan, right? It helps if we plan, um, and uh, you know, especially if you're looking at you know, maybe you're looking at a church, looking at a ministry. It helps to have um, you know an annual calendar. Okay, this is what we'd like to do in the twelve months twelve months of this year. Okay, um, and rather than thinking, uh, you know, what am I going to do this week, right? What am I going to do this month, or what are we going to get into this month? To plan ahead and to have, uh, you know, uh, have an annual calendar. You know, these are some of the areas. It, it again flows from the vision, right? The vision, and uh, which which we break it down into into the mission statement, what we are about, what we are doing. And, uh, and then we have certain goals, right? And in order to do that, you know, we are scheduling our time, we are organizing our time to be effective, right? So, um, so we take that uh, entire year and say, okay, this is what we are going, going for in this year, okay? Um, which means there could be, you know, we're looking at different ministries, and we're looking at different, uh, you know, different areas of different ministries, and we're saying, okay, this is what this ministry, you know, is going to do uh, in these twelve, um, in these twelve months. So the ministry leader can plan that. Ministry leader can plan. This is this is what we plan in January. We want to do these things, these three things. Um, in in February, we want to do this. In March, we want to do this. So you plan the entire year, right? Um, when it comes to uh, let's say uh, maybe the pulpit calendar. You know, you're a pastor, and uh, you're 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 saying, okay, uh, this is my congregation. Maybe 50 people, 100 people, whatever, 500. But this year, we feel that we want to make this journey 
right? Spiritually, uh, in faith, um, we want to grow. You know, we want to grow in these areas, right? So you identify two, three areas, and accordingly, you can plan the study of God's word. Okay, so these are areas, you know, we, we're going, uh, we're going to look at um, marriage and family, right? So just feel that there's a need that people need to have a biblical perspective of marriage, a biblical perspective of family, and it's going to help those who are single, and it's going to help those who are married as well. So yeah, we're going to look at that. So what are those Sundays in the year that you're going to be, you know, preaching about, or you're going to be teaching on marriage and family, right? It helps to, you know, plan that, right? So your entire pulpit calendar can be planned out. Um, again, when we say plan, we're saying, okay, we are we are thinking, we are dreaming with God and saying, God, you know, this is where we, you know, we feel that we need to go as a church. We need to, you know, we need to make this move as a ministry and then, you know, plan things out. Okay. Um, okay. So we'll stop here um, and probably we'll review organizing uh, again and then um, get into some details of scheduling our time right, uh, in the next class. Okay, so yeah, we'll stop here. Right, you, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much. God bless.